I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us again at the Azure Academy. Today we're talking about Windows Virtual Desktop and how we can update the fleet. So if you haven't done so already, please do click on our subscribe button and join us at the Azure Academy and give us some comments below on any questions that you have or things you'd like us to make videos on in the future. So this topic has come up because of a few different things. Uh, so I've been working with customers since uh, before WVD was generally available. And this question inevitably comes up with, great, now that I've got WVD up and running, how do I update VMs? How do I manage them? How do I update the fleet that it's in my host pool. How do I roll over the systems or how do I continuously patch them or, you know, lots of different ways you could ask this question. First of all, the VMs that run in your WVD host pool are normal Azure VMs. So if your corporate estate is being managed by an upgrade management tool like Configuration Manager or you're using Windows Update or a third party tool, you can continue to use that. This particular video, we want to approach things in more of a cloud and DevOps type manner. Now, this is the general approach that we're taking with Windows Virtual Desktop because we are decoupling the operating system image from the user profile and very soon we'll be having app attached so we can decouple the applications from the VMs as well. So it shouldn't be a great shock that I propose that your VMs are disposable and can be thrown away rather than updated. But when this happens, we do have to still manage the VMs themselves. We have to go through decommissioning process. We have to get them out of the host pool, put the new ones into the host pool, and make sure that we still have enough VMs allocated so that we can meet demand. So let's go over to the Azure portal as we dig into this. And right about now, you might be thinking this looks a little bit different. And that's because it does. There has been a recent uh, icon image pack upgrade that's happened to Azure and it's rolling out everywhere. So you will see this soon if you don't already. So I'm going to go here to my application resource group where I've got my VMs. So as you can see, I've got two VMs that are deployed and these are in a single host pool at the moment. And so now it is time for patching and updating our image. And this of course comes back to now two different options. You are either using a custom image like I have here, or you may even be deploying a custom image with the shared image gallery. We have uh, done a video on the shared image gallery in the past. I'll put a link to that here in the YouTube card. You can go watch that if you're interested, but either way, whether you're using a marketplace image, which these guys were based off of, or a custom image, we need to roll out new VMs. In our previous video, I had shown off a script that I had written to take any VM that was deployed and add it to your host pool. Today, I've got a update to that because we're going to now use a template that I've created that'll do this process entirely for you. So let's go over to my GitHub repo. And here in GitHub, we'll go to the Azure WVD repo. And then we've got a folder here for PowerShell and one for the WVD templates. And if you just want to run the script itself, then there it is, the new WVD session host. And we covered that in our last video. See the card up here if you didn't catch that. And then also we've got our WVD templates folder. Now this folder, um, I built this using a Visual Studio solution, and that's this SLN file. So you'd want to download this whole thing, then open the solution if you're using Visual Studio. If not, not using something like VS Code or something else uh, to edit your, your JSON, then you can just open up uh, the folder here. And the one in particular that is the marketplace image is the WVD new host. And if you're using a custom image, there's a folder for that. And there is the template using a custom image. So let's walk through the readme here quickly. Basically what these templates are going to do is allow you to choose either Windows Server or Windows Client as your operating system. And then it will join the VMs to your Active Directory domain, install the WVD agent as well as the WVD bootloader, install FS logics and set up your user profiles onto a share as well uh, you will need a registration token and those things were all covered in our last video and then the requirements section here more speaks to how to get WVD up and running and these are the the prerequisites that you need before you can even use this template so I've got this all here in a deploy to Azure button so let's just click on that Okay, and that brings us to the Azure custom deployment template, and I can set up all of these parameters here in just a quick second. 
Okay, there we go. So the first thing we have is a prefix, and this prefix is gonna go at the front of the name of all of the VMs that we're gonna build. Now, I would suggest that as you're doing this, you have your VMs named in some way to tell you when they were built or when they were patched. So for example, I could say WVD-10, telling me that they were patched in October, or WVD-11, they were patched in November. And this would align with my naming convention, as you can see on my existing VMs. So since I've already got 10, let's presume that it is now November, and now I'm going to roll out WVD-11s. Then we have our username and password fields. Now these have two purposes because this will establish the local username and password as well as be coupled together with our third field, our domain name, in order to create LNTAD at msazureacademy.com and join the VMs using those credentials. So make sure that the username and password you put here are going to allow you to join your VM to your domain. Then we have our instance count and the instance can go from anywhere from one to 99 VMs and of course I could have made it larger but I put that limit in there so if you need that larger edit the template and change that to whatever limit you want so I'm just gonna build three and then we choose from either Windows Server or Windows Client OS and the Windows Server is going to be server 2019 Windows Client is going to be Windows 10 with office baked in and then we have our VM size of small medium or large and those are three VM SKUs that I picked that work in my environment if you don't like my sizes, then again, edit the template and make that whatever you like. The small is gonna be B2MS, which is a size I use very often. Then I'm also adding the auto shutdown to our VMs because they don't need to be running past 11 o'clock at night in my case. If you need yours running 24 seven, then you can remove that again from the template. Now we need to know what network we're going to build these on. And so I'm asking you to provide the resource group where the network lives the name of the network and the name of the subnet and then I will compile those together into the appropriate strings. And then finally, we have the parameters related to the script itself. And this is the share in which I have my FSLogix user profiles set up and the registration token for the particular host pool. And if you're unfamiliar with what all I'm talking about, go back and watch our last video, which is basically running a custom script extension so that you can join new VMs to an existing host pool. And then we'll check our I agree to the terms and conditions above and hit purchase. All right, so that is going on and we can watch our deployment up here. And this will take several minutes for it to build uh, all three VMs and join them to our host pool. Our deployment process has completed. We have three new VMs with the prefix WVD-11. And let's verify that they're in our host pool. And yes, they are. So now that we have them in the host pool, which is enough capacity to replace our old VMs, we wanna now set the old ones to no longer allow sessions. So this is all about processes. So if you have your old VMs that you have X number of things you have to do in order to decommission them, then by all means, go ahead and do that. This is just the way that I'm doing it in my environment. So I could set these in here through the edit function to be allow new session host is no. However, I'm imagining that a lot of you are going to have more than two hosts in your host pool. You could have dozens or hundreds and clicking them through here would be a real pain, which is why the naming convention and the prefix becomes important. Let's go over to PowerShell. So I've already logged into my RDS context and I've written the command here to get the session hosts from a specific tenant in a specific host pool. When we run that, we can see that the results are the same thing that we saw in the graphical portal. So we have our WVD11 systems as well as our WVD10 systems. So what we want to do now is we want to write a command that is going to allow us to pull out just the WVD10 VMs and then we're going to switch those to no longer allow sessions. So for that, we'll go back to our get session host command and we'll add a few more things here. So we'll start off with a pipe and then we will add the where object command, which either could be where dash object or you could shorten it with a question mark. And then we need a property. So we'll do a dash property or you could just type in the property name either way and then the property is going to be called session host name because that's the function that we're looking at is the session host name so I'll copy that paste it in where the property of session host name does what well where it does a match 
four dash 10. And then we hit enter and we see just those two original hosts. So we know we've got the right systems now. So now we need to change their allow sessions from true to false. So then we can add another pipe to that and do a set RDS session. Then we add the flag for allow new sessions is false. And we enter that and we can see that those have now been set to false. We can see that inside the web management portal as well. So now these two hosts are no longer allowing new sessions. So the question is, do they have any existing sessions? And this is where again, process comes in. You should be doing this kind of change during a maintenance period or a change window so that you're sure that you drain the hosts ahead of time. So I would suggest at the beginning of this process for you that you're going to do uh, the, the rollover on Tuesday. So at the end of Monday, you put the hosts in drain mode or into allow new sessions is false so that no new people can log on to the host pool. And then you go and build your new ones and then we can just cycle them out very easily. So another command that we can use to check for any logged on sessions is the get RDS user session. Again, giving it the tenant and host pool name. Now I don't have any yet, so let's create one so you can see what that looks like. So here is our RDS client and I'll just start paint because that's a quick program to load. Okay, and then we can see paint is obviously working. So if we go back and run our command again, we can see that we do have an active session and which host we are currently running that session on. So you could write a further query here and using the where object function again, looking for the session host name that matches dash 10, we can see that we have nothing. And you can get more elaborate with this, of course, where you're having the script say, if I do find any in dash 10, then stop the process of removing them from the host pool. Um, so this can get uh, much more complicated if you choose to do it this way. And then of course you can wrap this into an if else statement or wrap it into being part of a PowerShell module or a function and go crazy with it. However it is that suits you. But since I don't have any sessions that are currently logged into my dash 10 systems. So I'm going to run a final command here that will remove these VMs from the host pool. And that is to get the session hosts from our tenant and host pool where the session name matches dash 10 and then pipe that to remove RDS session hosts with the force flag. And when we run that command, that's over in just a second. We go back to the web management portal and we just do a quick refresh on here and those guys are now gone. So we have effectively updated our host pool that is now allowing new sessions onto our new VMs and we have gotten rid of who have the older image without the patches or, or what have you. And now the final step that remains would be to clean up Azure. And so in the Azure portal, you could do this again through a script or you could use uh, just the Azure portal itself here. Go through and find all of the dash 10 items, do a delete on them confirm it and run the delete process. And this of course presumes that you have FS logics backing up your user profiles to a central location and that all your applications that need to be installed are baked into your image or you're going to deploy them after the VMs are up and running through a deployment or configuration management tool. So there's one final piece around WVD that we're going to take a look at today and that is in our documentation. So we're going to go to products, scroll down to Windows Virtual Desktop and then open up those docs. And under the tutorial section, we'll go to number five here, create a host pool to validate service updates. Now, the reason I bring this up now rather than at the beginning is this is a choice that you may or may not implement in your environment. Depending on how many host pools you have already, what their purpose is, how you've got them configured, this may not be applicable. But I'll bring this up anyway because it is a good practice. So a validation host pool is exactly like your regular production host pool. However, there is a flag that you can set in PowerShell. So if you scroll down a little bit here and see the command, and that is to set your RDS host pool with the validation environment set to true. Now, when you set this on host pool A, 
and then you have host pool B, you would set that to false. When you set a validation environment to true, that tells us to push out the normal updates, and that's down here, the update schedule. And the normal updates we're referring to here are not Windows updates. These are the updates to the agent services that run the VM as a WVD session host. So we'll push those out on a monthly basis or faster if there are critical updates that have to be pushed. When you set the validation flag to be false, you're telling us do not give me updates so none of those session hosts that are in that particular host pool will get the updates but the one that is set to true will get the updates and again this should match your production environment completely so that you can test and prove that all of the updates that we are pushing out to run the service do not interfere with anything you are doing in your session hosts so I hope you've enjoyed looking at how we can update our host pools and roll the fleet over on a ongoing monthly basis or however often you plan on updating your images, your session hosts, or your applications, and then just allow the users using their centralized FSLogix profiles to log on to the new VMs as we roll them out and they never know the difference. So if this video was good, hit that thumbs up icon as well as give us some comments below on any questions you have or if this was a help to you or anything else that you'd be interested in us creating a video on on WVD or any other topic. While you're down there, go ahead and click the notification icon so that you can receive an email when our videos come out, which is roughly once a week. And we'll see you in the next video. Happy learning.